The concern the HHS mandate presents to people of every faith, we're pleased to have as our next speaker from Calvary Community Church in Lincoln, please welcome Pastor Steve Davenport. Religious freedom is the cornerstone of our nation. Back in the 16th century, our forebears loaded all of their possessions on a ship and undertook a perilous journey across the North Atlantic in search of a land of God free from the fear of government reprisal. While some came to the New World looking for gold, many came looking for God and the freedom to worship Him according to the dictates of their conscience. Our founding fathers understood that the very basis for economic and political freedom was the freedom of religion. And a free nation we have been. Our history is a legacy to levels of freedom never before seen nor experienced in human history. But we have taken that freedom for granted. Sadly, in our time, we have witnessed the erosion of religious liberty, slowly, deceptively, yet surely. In our education system, every religion and worldview is tolerated and applauded but one, that of Jesus Christ and his gospel, the very faith upon which this nation was founded. The very mention of the God of the Bible, the very mention of the God of the Bible in the public square is under constant bombardment by those who do not value religious freedom. Using the mythical separation of church and state clause found nowhere in the U.S. Constitution, men and women of faith have allowed themselves to become a non-factor in the war against our first principles. And now, because of our silence and perhaps because of a lack of courage, we face the gravest threat to religious liberty this nation has ever seen. That threat comes to us specifically in the form of the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. No one disputes that the health care industry needs reforming to make sure that no one is denied medical care. God's people have been on the front lines for centuries helping the sick and dying. May I submit to you that few, if any, have done more to care for the poor and the sick than the Church of Jesus Christ? But this bill is nothing more than a wholesale takeover of the entire health care industry by the government. And in so doing, liberals have used this bill as a vehicle to advance the agenda of the culture of death. Gone are the days when liberal politicians would voice their personal approval, disapproval of abortion while trying to maintain its legality. What we are seeing today is a cult-like devotion to the murder of the innocent unborn who bear the image of God. And as if this wasn't evil enough, now they will not be content until every American shares in the expense of this atrocity. The irony is how this agenda is advanced under the banner of pro-choice. Now that term implies that the government will honor one's ability to choose, but as we see in Obamacare, the choice has been removed. Unlike the legislators who passed it, some of us actually have read the bill. It's been said that the devil is in the details. And can I say that is a very accurate description when you read the fine print of this legislative atrocity. The bill does provide for abortion funding, and according to the Guttmacher Institute, the premiums collected indirectly could finance 2 million abortions per year. But that's not all. Under this plan, dependent children are automatically enrolled and can receive free contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills without the knowledge of their parents due to HIPAA laws. For you see, they think they know more about what is best for your children than you do. Now, in addition to this law providing these objectionable services, there is no mandate to cover a live birth. Obamacare does ensure birth control and abortion pills to minors, but does not guarantee that they, should they choose to keep the baby, that birthing services will be covered. So much for choice. Furthermore, this mandate will require all religious-based organizations such as private schools, Christian camps, parachurch organizations, and even daycares to provide a health care plan 
that includes birth control and abortion. And I ask again, where is the right of these organizations to choose? It simply does not exist under this mandate. This is only the beginning. Left unchecked as we look around the world where the culture of death has been allowed to prevail, it is not unforeseeable that in the very near future, such a reckless disregard for human life will metastasize into more devious forms of social planning. How long will it be before an all-powerful government will mandate the murder of unborn children with handicaps, <laughs> citing the excuse that such individuals are an undue burden on society? Is the day far off when the same governmental body will establish a one-child policy, or maybe a no-child policy, using environmental and po overpopulation concerns to justify it? We're at a time of great need in our nation. Our greatest need is not necessarily a political solution, though that is indeed part of it. Our greatest need is a spiritual renewal, a return to the old paths, the ones in which our forefathers walked. And may we covenant together today, not only as citizens of the great United States of America, but also as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, to work and pray that we see this renewal takes place in our lifetime. May God bless you.